So good afternoon and welcome to the Europe Let's Cooperate breakout session on environment and resource efficiency. So my name is Astrid Severin and I am a thematic expert for uh, environment and resource efficiency at the Interreg uh, Europe Policy Learning Platform. In this session, you will learn about successful policy changes by Interreg Europe's projects in sustainable tourism, waste management, natural and cultural heritage, and you will also discover the Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform. This session will also include discussions on the future program and priority topics to inspire prospective applicants. So we hope that you all get a lot of inspiration for new future projects and that you're also using the services of the policy learning platform to address your policy challenges. So we have a very packed session and uh, a very intense exchange ahead of us in the next 60 minutes. So I would like to dive right into the subject and give the word to Marie Guiton, Project Officer for Environment and Resource Efficiency at the Interreg Europe uh, Secretariat. So please tell us about the achievements of the projects uh, in the last programming period. Marie, the word is yours. Thank you, Astrid. And uh, well, thank you all for uh, having joined us uh, in this session um, on environment and resource efficiency. So I'm going to uh, give you a quick overview of the results we have achieved uh, in these uh, thematic objectives. Um, next slide, please. So first, a word about um, so, okay, slim the slide is uh, okay, yeah. So, just a quick word first about this thematic objective, which is a bit specific because it's so wide, it covers so many topics, and also because it has two uh, different strands. Um, so, next slide. Um, first, um, I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, the projects we have uh, we have approved. Uh, so within this session, within this uh, thematic objective, we have first uh, 36 projects uh, that have been approved uh, during the four calls of projects. Uh, first, uh, 30, 36 projects dealing with um, nature and cultural natural and cultural heritage. That's uh, yeah, almost uh, more than two, 270, well, 275 partners involved. Next slide. Then we have the second strand of uh, the thematic objective, which is about uh, resource efficiency, for which we have uh, 31 projects um, approved. So in total, with those uh, two strands, we have uh, 67 projects that have been approved. and. Well, more than 400, um, 400 partners, and well, as you can see uh, from the from the map, uh, partners from all around uh, Europe, uh, covering 29 of the partner states uh, involved in the program. Next slide. Uh, in terms of topic coverage, as I said in the beginning, this uh, this thematic objective is very broad. So um, we have, well. We have tried to cluster a bit uh, the, the project topics to give you an overview uh, of uh, what is addressed by the project. Um, the first uh, line you see uh, groups 28 projects all related to natural and or cultural heritage. And the common point uh, in those projects is that they all use or address uh, directly a sustainable tourism. So that could be, for example, uh, cultural routes, or it could be also uh, some projects um, with a specific geographical uh, uh, area, for example, coastal areas and rivers. Uh, we also have projects on cross-border regions, on mountain regions and all use um, sustainable tourism as a solution to answer the need and their challenges. Then we have a cluster of the project with a second, uh, you can see a second bar with 20 projects dealing uh, with topics related to resource management. Among those, we have 12 related to waste management. We have also some related to water management, um, to environment, uh, environmental performance management, some also related to green public procurement. Uh, then a, a third group of projects, it's uh, the projects uh, related to circular economy. So we have 11 projects uh, focusing on this topic uh, or on industrial symbiosis, on, um, on uh, business models or also on citi citizen involvement in circular economy. 
Finally, we have the smallest group uh, related to biodiversity and ecosystems. So uh, um, this is more the, the, the niche uh, the niche topics uh, for this uh, for this uh, program uh, with um, eight projects uh, dealing with uh, governance of biodiversity ecosystem services, uh, well green and blue infrastructure, and some very specific on uh, invasive species uh, like pollution. So as you can see. Uh, really um, uh, quite a big variety of topics uh, linked also to the fact that we have those two strands um, in uh, the thematic objective environment and resource efficiency. Next slide. So what about the results? Uh, what has been achieved uh, with those uh, 67 projects? Next slide, please. Oh, sorry. Um, no, sorry, pre previous slide. Yeah, so first let's talk about the outputs. Um, we have uh, we have about 1,000 uh, good practices which have been identified by our projects. So with those good practices, it's uh, more than 200 action plans which have been uh, prepared uh, by the project partners. And it's also more than 3,000 uh, people who have been uh, uh, who have increased their knowledge on the topic addressed by the project. Um, so in terms of uh, target um, uh, target of the program, uh, it means that almost uh, the targets has been already achieved, uh, even exceeded for the for the for the output uh, staff with increased capacity, and it's almost uh, achieved uh, for the target of uh, the number of action plans. Um, next slide, please. But well, those outputs are just a means then uh, for to reach the results, and our results it's policy changes. Um, so already 191 uh, policy changes, policies improved uh, in the territories of the partners involved in the project uh, for uh, those projects involving environment and resource efficiency. So that's already a huge achievement. And uh, in terms of fund uh, influence, this uh, this links to a, a leverage effect of 2.4. So you may think that this leverage effect is lower than uh, what uh, was uh, presented this morning by uh, our program di director, Elvin Civis. Uh, however, there are several explanations for this. Uh, well, the first one is linked to the fact that there are different types of policy changes. Policy changes can be uh, really uh, translated uh, into some found new funding, like when there is a new project, new call for projects. But some some uh, policy changes also are not directly linked uh, to a new to 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 new funds, uh, like when there is a change of governance. So this is why we can have this lower leverage effect. Another reason also maybe that. Well, the projects in, uh, in environment and resource efficiency, they had a very slow takeoff with only 11 projects um, submitted, uh, well, uh, sorry, approved in the first call against 24 approved in the fourth call for a project. So uh, as you can see, many projects, most the majority of the projects are still ongoing and many of them are still in the phase of exchange of experience. Next slide, please. Um, okay, I've talked. I've talked a lot about the result obtained uh, thanks to the project, um, but as you know, it's uh, it's very important for us to capitalize on this project and to, to grasp the, the knowledge to reap uh, the benefit of the exchange of experience and to share it among uh, well, first the, the project partners, but also among all policymakers in Europe. So this is why we have this uh, the, the policy learning platform, and I invite you uh, to have a look, uh, if not done yet, at uh, the good practices uh, and the policy briefs available in the Knowledge Hub. Um, I invite you also to participate in the next workshop that will be organized or to watch again at the webinars that were already uh, um, that were already recorded and are available on the website. And uh, of course, there is also um, our expert support for, uh, through peer reviews and matchmaking sessions, which is available for you. Um, well, Astrid, uh, next slide. Uh, I'm done with the presentation of the results uh, of environment and resource efficiency broadly. Now I let uh, Astrid uh, dive uh, more into detail so uh, that you have a better understanding of what you can uh, achieve uh, with uh, an Interreg Europe project. Thank you all. 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Marie, for this uh, introduction and for letting us know uh, the impressive results and the participants of uh, the Environment and Resource Efficiency Project. I'm just going to continue from where you left off a little bit with the services of the policy learning platform. And here I would like to go on the specific services on demand. So we have uh, peer reviews, uh, and as has been mentioned this morning, uh, who is available, uh, is eligible for these uh, peer reviews. Uh, basically, it's uh, managing authorities or intermediate bodies, but also all other local and regional policymakers. The important thing is that you are uh, able as a body or an entity to influence your policies uh, so that you can implement the results of a peer review. And uh, we would then organize a face-to-face -face exchange with experts and peers from other regions that have had similar policy challenges and can give you advice. So we also had the questions for the costs. What we would do is we would set everything up for you. Uh, we would identify the suitable peers, put the agenda together um, and provide guidance and coordination throughout the entire process. We also have the possibility to finance simultaneous interpretation, which is very often uh, important for policymakers. And should it be an on-site event, we can even finance some catering costs. So from a cost point of view, that should be um, also not an issue. So with the next slide, please, you will see that we have already had a lot of peer reviews carried out throughout uh, Europe. So the next slide, please. Um, uh, 10, 10 for um, environment and the resource efficiency. And we have also carried out matchmaking sessions, which is, so to say, the little sister of the peer review, which only takes uh, about two and a half hours. And um, here you can see, um, if you click again, I hope, uh, all the different uh, peer reviews that have been carried out uh, throughout around Europe uh, on waste management, on circular economy in the textiles industry, on corporate social responsibility, or we are looking forward to the next peer reviews on pay as you throw systems. We have also worked for Natura uh, 2000 management uh, and uh, we have had a very interesting peer review just uh, recently on um, the reviving the network of the fortress belts for the city of Antwerp, which you can see on the next slide. So here we have been focusing uh, on stakeholder engagement, on governance structures for such a network, um, potential funding and business models, and also a communication strategy and a branding that helps the the, the, um, the network to uh, be revived again. Uh, very interesting. And on the next slide, you can see we have uh, held, for example, a matchmaking session on a pay as you throw system for uh, the city of Burgas in Bulgaria, where they wanted to look on how they could best implement such a system, uh, what um, fees they could apply, um, how the door to door. Uh, collection works, etc. So very um, various uh, um, subjects which you can treat directly. And if you want to um, ask for such a peer review or matchmaking, it's sufficient to go on the um, on the portal of Interreg Europe or in the chat. You will see the link for that. Um, it's already posted by my colleague Anne, or you can also simply send me an email. Um, I think that will also be posted uh, by by Anne in the chat very briefly. And with the last slide that I'm having, I just want to underline that uh, our beneficiaries have been uh, all very surprised and how efficient uh, this peer review is working and uh, how well they have been uh, informed, what they have been learn learning, and they have all been going right into implementation. So there's a lot of positive energy also coming from this process. So thank you also to myself in this case for this presentation. And uh, again, if you have uh, more questions, then you can uh, always uh, contact us. We are here to help you. In this, this uh, I don't want to spend more time on our general um, introductions and go right uh, into the presentations of three knowledgeable speakers that we have with us here today, which can report about their policy improvements for environment and resource efficiency uh, that they have been experiences, uh, experiencing through their projects. And it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Mara, who is going to speak about a new investment plan for water tourism on uh, Gauja River. I hope I pronounced that uh, correctly, which has been inspired by the Rotterdam Tidal Park in the Swear project. So, Mara, the word is yours. Uh, thank you, Katerina. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me today to share uh, our project success uh, story 
of um, knowledge exchange and policy improvements. Uh, as you can see, my name is Mara Sprude. I'm from Latvia, from uh, Vidzemet Planning Region, uh, which is a state institution for regional development. And today I represent Project SWARE, which is mainly about uh, policy improvements and uh, sustainable heritage valorization. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, in the following minutes, I will introduce you to the Riverfront Development Project in Latvia that uh, Valmira municipality uh, elaborated by transferring a good practice uh, learned during the knowledge exchange visit to the Netherlands in two 2017. And um, one of the success factors for our project uh, was the roadmap uh, methodology for stakeholder involvement that was elaborated at the beginning of the project. And uh, following this methodology, uh, we identified, identified the right stakeholders who had a high interest in the topic and had uh, also the power and influence to achieve policy change. And uh, Andres Kleppers, uh, our stakeholder who uh, got encouraged and inspired by this uh, good practice of Rotterdam. He's an associated professor in the tourism field and also a member of Balmere City Council. Uh, therefore, he could put this idea on the municipality's agenda. And, uh, and so the, prog uh, the project uh, is, is living and uh, is continuing to be developed. Next slide, please. So uh, let's go a bit more into detail. Uh, Valmira is our region's largest city with approximately uh, 30,000 inhabitants and Gauja River flows through, uh, dividing the city into two parts. And the idea of promenade along the river was already in the air uh, when the project's knowledge exchange visit took place. Uh, but this visit uh, shifted the promenade idea a little uh, and the main contribution of the swear visit was the, the realization of the scale, that uh, it was not an unfeasible project for a city of this size. Uh, and this visit uh, encouraged to develop this idea further and to shift from a more human-centered promenade project to uh, integrated waterfront development where uh, people and nature interact uh, in a friendly and sustainable way. And uh, now it has been achieved that the riverfront development uh, in the urban environment is now included in the municipal uh, planning documents, uh, both short term and long term. And of course, the project uh, of this scale needs to be implemented step by step. Uh, but the benefit of this integrated plan is that all the individual activities and initiatives uh, that are already implemented or are uh, will be implemented in the future, they come together and it is easier to prioritize. Uh, next slide, please. So here, uh, here you can see the benchmark example uh, of the Rotterdam Tidal Park and the Gauja River Promenade Project. Uh, the scale of the Rotterdam Project, uh, of course, is much larger. Here in Latvia, the project covers 20 kilometers uh, in total, which is 10 kilometers on each side of the river. Uh, but both cities share the common aspect of, fl of fluctuating water levels uh, that need to be taken into account and that uh, creates some challenges. Uh, Valmer has transferred from Rotterdam this uh, explicit spatial segmentation approach uh, and the idea of preserving and respecting the natural environment, flora and fauna while creating a pleasant space for people. And uh, yeah, let's go further into the Gauja Promenade project. Next slide, please. So uh, as I mentioned, Gauja, uh, Gauja River flows through the city and uh, it is as a vein of unrest and it brings the natural uh, area into the city and creates this uh, synergetic land landscape lines uh, and the dream of Valmira is to, to make this natural heritage accessible from anywhere in the city and the neighborhoods uh, by means of soft mobility, so that there will be no gaps, uh, no fragmentation, and uh, 
the river and the greenery around it would uh, be like a green echo corridor that is also friendly to, to birds, to insects, to plants, uh, and that the infrastructure created would blend organically with the nature uh, and uh, with no negative effects. And uh, that the green, uh, the, the green infrastructure would be like a spine uh, of the soft mobility uh, infrastructure within the city. And next slide, please. So, uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, the concept of Gaoya Promenade Project is uh, has shifted from just human-centered to integrated waterfront development. And here are listed the main, um, uh, like the main aspects of the idea of the dream. Uh, the city finds itself in a very unique place among two uh, Natura 2000 uh, sites. Uh, one is Gaoya National Park and the other is uh, Northern Gaoya a protected landscape area. Um, and uh, the main emphasis of the green infrastructure uh, is that uh, the project would improve uh, the quality of life uh, of, this, of the people of the city and uh, the people, the inhabitants, would have uh, a direct access to, through this green corridor, to the Natura 2000 sites on both sides of the city. Uh, and um, they, uh, they could uh, reach this, these territories for recreation purposes, and they wouldn't need to use uh, cars, because uh, the soft mobility infrastructure would be uh, good enough to use for this purpose. So it would also uh, uh, contribute to climate change mitigation because there would be no need to travel by car for recreation purposes in the area. And uh, the other aspect is to uh, keep this promenade um, well uh, integrated in the, in the nature. Uh, so that the nature and humans would interact in a very friendly way. Uh, and um, two minutes, please, Ma. Yes, and uh, and the, and on in this uh, part, there also eco gardening will come uh, in on the agenda on how to create green areas uh, around the recreation infrastructure and not to fragmentize the uh, the natural structures. Uh, and yeah, and I forgot to mention that uh, regarding this uh, Gaoya National Park also and the already existing uh, tourism infrastructure, the idea is to connect this promenade with the already existing tourism and recreation infrastructure around the city. And it includes also a newly uh, elaborated uh, long distance hiking trail, forest trail, which is part of the E11, the European long distance uh, trail network. Uh, next slide, please. And yes, as I mentioned, uh, from uh, Rotterdam Tidal Park project, we have, uh, Valmir has directly transferred the idea of spatial segmentation. So uh, all this promenade has been divided into areas uh, and each area has uh, its own um, objective and, uh, and um, how, what, what should be there and how the nature interacts with the infrastructure. Okay, next slide. And of course, there are also many uh, challenges ahead during the implementation of this project, both natural and human uh, origin. Uh, but um, I, what I could say uh, uh, by, by the end of my presentation is that we are really uh, happy about how this has turned out, uh, how the SWEAR knowledge exchange it's turned out uh, with such a great project uh, in our uh, region city of Valmir. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, yes, looking forward to uh, if you have any questions and to the next speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mara, for, for this explanation of how you have been taking over and what you've transferred. Actually, the very interesting aspect that you have taken into account the segmentation, and that is the element that you could... Uh, 
could transfer, if I understood this well. We already have one question from Leonard, who is asking uh, if the project could capitalize on the flood mitigation prospects of the waterfront part. Uh, yes, uh, the, there are some uh, uh, flooding, uh, well, how to say, this problem exists that the water level fluctuates and the flooding uh, possibility uh, has to be taken into account when uh, when uh, developing this project and um, and uh, the the municipality already has uh, uh, how to say has um, i forgot the word <laughs> identified the places where no in infrastructure could be built because of the flooding of it of, uh, possibility so so yeah it's so still you have, under you have already taken it into account maybe also yeah. interesting subject for the future yeah yeah for hazards, sure. uh, these kind of uh, uh, risks are uh, certainly also included in the future well thank you very much for sharing your experience uh, and your policy uh, change we would like to now move to a completely different subject uh, and to Krako, um, who has been allowing um, has been allowing underground containers by a new law that has been inspired by the separate collection system of the city of Porto in Portugal. So we have Michal here with us who can give us uh, all the insights on that. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Astrid. Uh, thank you also for the invitation to the event. Uh, as you said, today I, I'd like to tell you in short um, the implementation of our good practice uh, inspired with the inter interwaste project re related to the new law in underground uh, containers in the municipality of Krakow. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we saw uh, the underground containers uh, system for the first time in Porto during the first them thematic seminar of the interwaste in March 2017. Uh, the Porto city is well experienced in that topic. Uh, they had lots of underground containers in the city. Uh, and the system was also innovative. Uh, there were multiple types of different containers, so it was worth for us to see them. The next slide, please. Uh, during that time, uh, the idea to improve our waste management system in the municipality of Krakow came up. Uh, in the city, we have around uh, 400 sets of uh, bring-in sites, uh, which you can see on the left side. Uh, they look like bells and uh, our inhabitants can put their, uh, their selective municipal waste. As you can realize, uh, it they doesn't look good in the aesthetic point of view. Uh, that's why we would like to improve the aesthetics of our city and replace them with underground or semi-underground containers. Uh, so the good practice which we learned from Port. Next slide, please. After the decision to implement the practice, we had a bilateral meeting in Porto, which uh, helped us to get in, into to look into more deeply uh, in that topic. Next slide. We also obtained uh, the analysis of the feasibility of underground and semi-underground containers uh, for municipal waste in the municipality of Krakow in 2018. And this uh, analysis uh, helped us to uh, get more knowledge in that case. Next slide. The next step uh, was a change of our local law. Uh, in the municipality of Krakow, the main document which defines uh, the detailed rules for uh, waste management is titled uh, Regulations in Maintaining Cleanliness and Order in the municipality of Krakow. We decided to add there the paragraph uh, which states that it's allowed to collect municipal waste in underground containers equipped with a hydraulic platform or electric device in which a container with a capacity less than or equal to 1.1 square meters is placed or in semi-underground and underground containers equipped with a ground slot which allows to empty them with a vehicle with hydraulic crane. Uh, the main thing which we, we were inspired with, with uh, during the uh, study visit in Porto, uh, during the preparation of the paragraph also, uh, were types of containers which uh, we could see uh, during the study visit in the technical point of view. Uh, it was important for us to uh, include them all uh, in the regulations and 
thanks to the project, we had a possibility to see all of them. As you see, the paragraph is quite general, uh, but uh, without it, uh, the implementation of the practice wouldn't be possible. Uh, we allowed to collect the waste uh, in such containers in two types of properties, in multifamily houses and business properties. Next slide, please. And now I'd like to uh, tell you in short uh, how the process of the change of local law uh, in Krakow looked like. Uh, first, the municipality cleaning company, uh, which is the administrator of the waste management system in the municipality of Krakow, uh, prepared the new act of uh, regulations uh, in maintaining cleanliness and order. We implemented also other paragraphs, so we needed to consult them, uh, and it took almost half a year. Uh, after obtaining the legal advice in uh, October 2018, we could present it to the City Council. The first and the second reading of the Act was in December 2018. After that, Krakow City Councillors decided to vote in favour of the law, so they accepted all the amendments, including uh, the paragraph with the underground containers. The new Act have entered into force since April 2019, so from that time the installation of underground and semi-underground containers in Krakow is possible and is consistent with the law. Next slide, please. And one more click, please. Thanks. Um, in the result, a few months ago, the first set of underground containers exists in the city. Uh, it was possible thanks to the Interface project. Uh, I would like to emphasize that uh, the owners of properties are very interested in implementation of such, of such containers, especially in the new estates in the city. I would like to also add that uh, in the nearest future, we are going to make uh, the paragraph in the Act uh, more detailed, uh, including, for example, the specificity of the substrate and the requ requirements which will help to collect waste from the containers more easily for the companies. Next slide, please. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you very much, Michal, for explaining to us how you have been actually achieving this uh, policy change. I think it's very impressive how Krakow has been very systematically implemented that, made sure that all the technical aspects are covered and can actually be um, um, yeah, implemented. So you have these underground containers. I think for many cities is a very interesting uh, case study and uh, they can also get inspired by you, how you have been transferring that from Porto. So thank you very much for sharing that. Thank if you, you have uh, questions to Michal, I guess you can still put them uh, in the chat um, or you can also write to us so that uh, we can bring it uh, to uh, Michal's attention. So thank you very much for sharing also this very interesting policy change. So with this, we go uh, to our next case, also uh, very interesting in an area which is of um, um, interest to many of the participants in this um, uh, Europe Let's Cooperate event, uh, which is sustainable uh, tourism. And I would like to give the word now to uh, Lisa Bergius uh, from Central Finland uh, to speak about the locally funded projects uh, to improve their local strategy 2040 uh, and how they got inspired by different aspects of the three project. So please, the word is yours, Lisa. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. And I think we can move to the next slide, please. I'm starting to uh, this presentation by our policy context. And um, this is it. And uh, it's also the statutory toolbox of our regional development. And in 3D project, we decided that we are going to focus on improving the connection of um, well-being and tourism, especially. And the two main tools that we are focusing on are the regional strategy itself and the regional land use plan. Next slide, please. This slide shows the 3D change of experience process in a nutshell, starting from the needs, identifying the key elements of well being and also the needs for improvement of our trail network. We search for inspiration from the study visits and we 
identified especially five good practices uh, as uh, main sources of inspiration that I will introduce them later uh, in more detail. And then we understood the importance of feedback, especially during the study visit in central Finland that we organized ourselves. And all the participants gave feedback concentrating on highlights and improvement and transferability and learning of the good practices. And this feedback was very valuable for us in the transforming into an action plan. The next step was uh, that we were ready to form the priority objectives with our external experts. And we ended up forming up um, an action plan called regional structure of well-being. And today the focus is on three of the five actions, uh, which are the nature ecosystem services as part of the regional land use plan improvement and Yamsa path of senses and Yvaskula hiking and biking trail. Next slide, please. Before going to the actions, I would like to give two examples of the 3D project good practices impacts on our action plan formulation. And the first one is uh, the parks and museums without barriers in Val di Cornia coming from study visit in Italy. And uh, the picture is from my feedback form describing the inspiration and the transferability of the good practice. And it showed a very good example of an economic ecosystem step by step. And the other example is uh, from uh, six different good practices which all contained well-functioning gateways or service and information centered, centers that were based on regional, local, natural and cultural heritage. And these examples have been creating added value for locals and companies, and they are serving for us, it served as a basement of our action plan formulation. And next slide, please. Now the first action, which is, uh, nature ecosystem services as an activity included in our regional land use plan process and the needs came from the basic idea of improving uh, the connection of uh, tourism and well-being based on our strategy and also the need to support one good practice from our region our path may and paul cool with an idea of uh, promoting well-being and health related to nature and trail network. And the learning main points of uh, the inspiration first um, were the three good practices and coming from the study visits to Poland and Romania. And good practice constellation of good places from Romania and uh, from Poland and uh, two practices from Romania, ecotouristic trail network in Poaca Carpatilo and a network of hiking and biking trails in Transylvanian Highlands. Main points of learning were that we understood the importance of local good places as part of regional well-being structure and the importance of involving locals. And also the great connection of natural and cultural heritage and the trail network and the meaning of science as uh, creating information for the next steps and also the visibility of the elements and the services of nature ex ecosystem. And as a result, we decided that we could fund a study called the uh, regional, um, the nature ecosystem services in central Finland. And this was funded by our regional development fund and Young University of Applied Sciences. And this serves as a basement of the regional structure of well being and the things that we are going to do in our regional land use plan. And next slide, please. Presenting action Yamsa Path of Senses. And the needs for this came from the city of Yamsa. And they were participate, participating in the study visit in Tenerife, Spain. And uh, they had the overall need to find solutions for sustainable use of natural and cultural heritage. And the inspiration appeared to be the Anaga Trail of Senses. Um, and 
this is an example of an adaptation of a good practice because they understood that they can use the same idea. Main points, overall accessibility solution for disabled people and the overall elegancy in promoting local natural heritage and the sustainable, sustainable solutions as well. As a result, they were granted a funding from a national sustainable city program from a national our Finnish Ministry of the Environment. And as a result, they will have a path of senses in the very center of city of Jemsa, accessible for everyone and for every senses. And this the planning has already done and the implementation is ongoing. And as it is finished, it will serve both tourism and locals and also for education needs in the whole region. Next slide, please. And this is uh, the last action, hiking and biking trail coming from the needs from Uvascular City region for benchmarking um, good solutions for hiking and biking trail accessibility, visibility, interaction and participation. And the source of inspiration came from Romania, especially. Once again, ecotouristic trail network in Porta Carpatilla and the network of hiking and biking trails in Transylvanian Highlands. And especially the learning was that they had adaptable method for a step-by-step -step process. So the idea of starting the cooperation with the willing parties and the others will follow. But also, there was a model of functioning network of hiking and biking trails and uh, also very important is to learn about the interaction with local and associations. And as a result, we decided to fund the planning of this hiking and biking trail. The meaning of it is not only to have this of mobility, but this trail is going to serve as a connection missing part of our regional trail network. And this is also going to serve both locals and tourism, and it's a very good promotion for cycling indeed. And this was funded also from our regional development fund and the city of Uvascula. I tried to be very quick, so the next slide will end this presentation. I would like to thank you all for your attention, and especially I would like to thank all the three the fellow partners for your support and inspiration and Greetings to lead partner in Livorno province. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. You have been perfectly in time. And uh, um, I think it is an excellent example how you very systematically looked at the different good mm -hmm. practices and how you imply, applied them one by one to your different uh, approaches also uh, in central Finland. So thank you very much for outlining this for us. And maybe I can already start with you, um, Lisa. Apart from the results that you have just now presented, for you, what is the added value um, personally and, and also um, as an organization um, or as a region? What is, what is the added value that you have taken from the, from the project participation? First of all, for me, this is the... I'm a first timer. This is my, my first Interreg Europe project. And for me, I gained a network of people very inspirative and uh, lots of organization dealing with same things and aspects as we are doing as a managing authority and also the courage to search the new solutions europe-wide not only with uh, Finnish people <laughs> or the region and for the region yes we gained the better governance of our regional policy instruments also we improved for example our regional tourism strategy and there is also very good inspiration for regional cooperation in very many aspects. And I'll, I would also like to mention that actually we are serving other regions because now we are tutoring three pilot actions concentrating on silence as a tourism attraction. So the exchange of experience is very important and very inspirative. Thank you.
Thank you so much. This is also a very good subject that you just mentioned, the silence. Um, I've heard about darkness as well. That was also very good. So thank you very much for sharing that. Maybe I can go ladies first, uh, Michal. I can go to Mara first and ask her as well what you have perceived as um, added value for your region uh, or personally. Yes, I can totally agree with uh, Lisa and uh, also stress that uh, Interagura projects uh, they uh, provide a platform for uh, targeted collaboration of all uh, like regional, local, national stakeholders uh, in order to make uh, informed and coordinated policy decisions. And uh, it is really a possibility to test approaches that are already developed in other regions and to apply them and adopt to local uh, situations. So that is the, the largest uh, benefit for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Yeah, I think this is a this is a key. Yeah? Um, what what can you transfer and how can you uh, what can you actually adapt to your local situation uh, and to make this transfer actually working? So, I, I think I also have to congratulate you um, for for being able to to do this in such a good way. So, Michal, no, last but not least, also on your on your side, um, added value. What have you been perceiving for the city uh, of Krakow uh, or yourself um, as added value? Uh, I'd like to mention and emphasize that the implementation of underground uh, containers uh, wasn't the only good practice which we uh, have implemented uh, in Krakow thanks to the project. Uh, the other was the cre creation of a point uh, where unused products uh, like the furniture, for example, can be reused and get a second life. In that point, uh, the people, workers, just uh, are renewing uh, the items and they are being sold on auctions. Uh, the money which we obtain from the process uh, goes to the environmental education issues. And we have also uh, another point which was, which was inspired by uh, the Interest project, which is called uh, Krakow Exchange Point, and it's dedicated to trading unused books. So our inhabitants can bring their uh, the books and take some which uh, seem to be interesting for them. And the books which, uh, condi which condition is bad uh, go to the sorting plant and we receive uh, new raw material. So we have uh, lots of initiatives uh, inspired by the, by the project. Yeah, very important aspects. I think you just also mentioned uh, the reuse and the repair of products uh, uh, and not just uh, throwing things away. So avoiding the actually things becoming waste. So thank you very much. It sounds very interesting. So for the future, uh, Michal, what do you think? Um, will you apply for, uh, for new projects? Um, do you already have any specific ideas? Mm -hmm. Uh, sure, we, we would like to apply uh, in the new project. Uh, now, after ending the interwaste, uh, we aren't participating in any. So uh, it would be worth for us to, uh, to join the project because thanks to that, we can still improve our city, including our waste management system. And maybe we will join uh, the project related to the minimization of municipal waste uh, during the events like concerts, uh, matches and so on. Uh, I think in that topic, uh, there's a lot to do, uh, especially in the city of Krakow, where lots of events like that take place. Excellent. I think that's a very good idea. And I, I've seen a lot of good practices already uh, that are floating around on this kind of issue. So yes, please go together with people. That sounds like a very good uh, project to work on. So, and Mara, um, also for you, do you have future ideas already? Any project ideas you would like to implement in the next programming period? Uh, yes. Uh, well, the smart and sustainable management of uh, natural resources is um, uh, is uh, in the heart of our uh, uh, development program of our region for the next uh, years and uh, and we are looking for for efficient wise and uh, easy applicable solutions to achieve this so uh, yes for sure we are interested to be part of uh, of new uh, projects in the new period uh, looking forward yeah So same question for we're going to everybody to see what the, what what the planning Lisa you're also up to new new projects new ideas. I may say that we are open to new ideas and 
interested to join new interact Europe project and our focus I think will be because we are now renewing our strategy and it the three main focuses will be on well-being and related to health, nature, culture, sports and community and relating these, renewing the industry and renewable energy and circular economy. These are the three focuses that I think we have. And this platform is very good idea from you. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. It's good to be in touch uh, so we can help you maybe with some of the aspects. Um, so, with this, I think we want to ask uh, our, our participants today. Okay, Astrid, it seems there is an issue now with uh, when you're speaking, or is it only with me? Uh, it seems to have a yes, yes. no, but yeah, I can hear it as well. So maybe you can uh, maybe you can give your opinion of all the presentations shared today. Yeah, well, I have to say that I was very I was very um, well enthusiastic, of course, because as a as a joint secretariat, it's always interesting to uh, uh, to see and to feel also the results uh, and uh, the enthusiasm of of um, coming from the region, coming directly from the partners. I appreciated very much uh, your clear explanation on uh, the steps uh, to go from idea uh, visited, idea um, obtained in another region to uh, finally uh, implementation in your own region. So I think those steps uh, were very well explained and um, and this process is uh, uh, really the, the, the well, the, the key process that Interreg Europe wants to implement uh, among, uh, among the project, among the partners. Um, quite happy uh, as well to hear uh, that most of, well, the three of you, you have ideas for new projects um, and that you're willing to continue uh, in, uh, in the future uh, Interreg Europe program. And uh, well, uh, maybe it's time now also to ask, um, to have an open question to, to the audience, um, to ask whether, um, well, there are ideas also, uh, topics uh, that uh, um, that you would like to address. I, well, um, I think we have a poll uh, also um, to see uh, what kind of topics uh, the, the participant to the session uh, would like uh, to address in a future project. So maybe it's time to ask this to, to the audience. Yes, indeed, Marie. Maybe before we can see if we have Astrid back online with us, see if it's got any better. Could you could you speak a little bit, Astrid? Yeah, no. I think I think all these online meetings have turned uh, Astrid into a robot. So often uh, that is being used. But indeed, Marie, thank you for introducing the poll. So for everyone, uh, we would like to know from you for the future program what topics you would like to work on. So on the right hand side, you will see uh, several options and one of the tab uh, says Slido. When you navigate there, you can select environment and resource efficiency and you can let us know by typing several, uh, several words that you would like to work on in the future. And um, afterwards, we will share the results with you. In the meantime, I will also share some inspiration with you and Marie, maybe you can also tell, uh, tell us a bit about uh, the future topics that we'll be working on. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Lotte. I think it's important to uh, indeed uh, say that with the future program, well, uh, you will be, you will have much more freedom in uh, um, the selection of your topic ideas uh, because the, of the new. Um, well, the, the, the new setting uh, features of, of the program. So uh, some topics that were that you could not address with the current Interregular program, well, you will be able to address them uh, with the new program. Um, I'm thinking, for example, of um, some topics uh, related to, to, to climate change, uh, to uh, risk management um, that were um, 
well, that, that, that were not uh, part of uh, the thematic objective of the current program, but you will be able to address them with uh, the new program. Um, as I said also in my presentation, some topics were quite uh, uh, not very much addressed. Um, so uh, you can also please go ahead and feel free to address those uh, those niche topics, uh, loan planning, um, well, uh, what do we have else? Um, uh, well, urban reforestation, I see uh, there was also the suggestion, uh, well, uh, okay, um, again, invasive species, uh, pollinators issues. Um, uh, okay, so you will have much more freedom. So please use this uh, liberty and, uh, and go ahead uh, with uh, when preparing your new uh, project ideas. Um, I see the cloud is growing and uh, do we have already some result from the poll? I can, uh, I think I was sharing it just before. Let me uh, tell, tell me, Marie, if you can see the cloud over here. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. Well, I see. <laughs> I see that sustainable tourism is something again uh, which uh, which ranks very high uh, in the poll. So uh, as it was the main topic uh, currently in the current program, uh, it's still on top of the agendas. Uh, climate change is coming. Uh, excellent. Uh, water management. Uh, well, I think uh, this is also linked to, to climate change and to uh, um, change of uh, uh, risk of flood and uh, also of drought. Uh, biodiversity is getting uh, also a bit bigger, uh, maybe than in the current program. That's excellent. Uh, greening city, cultural heritage. Um, so all those topics, uh, it will be able to. You will be able to cover them with a uh, with a new program um, yeah what else can I say um, yeah I can say also that you know for all those topics if you have already project ideas uh, you're invited um, to share them um, in the expo um, in the expo tab uh, session, I, I will um, in the expo hall uh, where you can discuss them also uh, and try to identify already uh, future partners uh, for your future project ideas. Um, and maybe we still have a few minutes. And so it's time also to check if the audience has some questions uh, to our speakers or even to myself. I, I, I don't dare to say to Astrid. <laughs> because I'm, I'm not sure, Astrid, you would be able to answer. But still, if there are questions to the policy learning platform, um, let's keep those very last minute. <laughs> yeah. If there are any. Lotte, did you see? Um... I just posted in the chat as well, if there's any final questions, uh, we no. will see them coming in last minute. If not, I think it's about time that we do wrap up the session and maybe it's also a good time to just give the a final word to our speakers to, to share their final thoughts on today's session and then we can, uh, we can end the session. Maybe to start with Mara. Uh, yes, uh, I just would like to say uh, many thanks for this opportunity to uh, network with other project uh, uh, the representatives and it was really interesting to listen to how other uh, projects uh, learned uh, and, and it identified the good practices and the possibility to transfer them to their region so thank you for, for a very interesting uh, afternoon mm -hmm. well thank you mara for being with us and uh, sharing your experiences maybe next we'll move to michael Yes, I would like to also thank you for the participation in the event and I keep my fingers crossed for your future, future projects. Thanks a lot, Michal. We look forward to working with you in the future. And then finally, Lisa. Thank you also for my organization, Regional Council of Central Finland and 3D Project. And I also hope that I can meet all of you and have new nice inspirative project with you. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for participating today, for our speakers, for sharing their experiences. Thank you, Astrid. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to hear and see you again soon. 
Marie uh, for, for also taking us through your presentation. And for all the participants, don't hesitate to go and discover the rest of the, the exposition. And we'll, uh, we'll be back tomorrow as well. So don't miss out. Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>Get tailored support from our expert team. We can connect you with the right people and organizations. Together, we will find ways to solve your region's or city's challenges. Start your policy learning journey today.